Hi, this is Samantha Diedrich and Jared Campbell, fourth year APPE students from the University of South Florida, here to present a presentation on transfusion related acute lung injury, or better known as trolley. After completing this presentation, you should be able to define transfusion related acute lung injury, or trolley, and discuss its epidemiology, pathogenesis, risk factors, and clinical features. Evaluate a patient's signs and symptoms and compare them with diagnostic criteria for trolley. Also, based on a patient case, create a treatment plan for a patient with trolley. And then finally, you should be able to discuss possible prognosis and prevention strategies for trolley. So what is trolley? Trolley is the most common transfusion related cause of death in the United States. It commonly occurs after a patient receives an allogeneic blood transfusion. According to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the exact definition of trolley is the following. It's a new acute lung injury occurring during or within six hours after a transfusion with a clear temporal relationship to transfusion in patients without or with risk factors for acute lung injury other than transfusion. Patients with pre-existing cases of ALI are excluded from this de definition. So are patients who develop ALI more than six hours after they receive a blood transfusion. Since 2003, trolley has been the leading cause of transfusion-related deaths. The actual incidence of trolley lies somewhere between one in 5,000 patients to one in 300,000 patients that are blood transfusion recipients. The incidence is 50 to 100 times higher amongst patients that are critically ill. In 2006, there were a total of 35 trolley-related deaths reported. This is more than the combined total of other transfusion-related deaths. All available blood components, including whole blood cells, red cells, apheresis platelets, whole blood platelets, fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, granulocytes, stem cell products, and even IV immunoglobulin preparations have been associated with the occurrence of trolley. Trolley occurs most often with fresh frozen plasma with an incidence of one in 7,900 units of fresh frozen plasma. In general, the hallmark pathogenesis of acute lung injury is due to increased pulmonary microvascular permeability and elevated protein levels found within edema fluid. The exact pathophysiology of trolley is unknown, but there are two likely hypotheses, one of which is related to leukocyte antibodies and the other pertains to biologically active substances, such as lipids or cytokines. This second hypothesis is also referred to as the two-hit model hypothesis. Okay, so now for some more information on pathogenesis. So as far as the two hypotheses, the first one, which involves leukocyte antibodies, or this is also referred to as immune-related trolley, antibodies from the donor, usually multiparous women, triggers the release of neutrophils within recipients' pulmonary capillaries which leads to pulmonary destruction and capillary leakage, and then ultimately respiratory failure. As for the second hypothesis involving biologically active substances, this is referred to as non-immune related trolley. So this is, can also be called as the two hit or two event hypothesis. The first hit or event is related to the patient's current medical condition, such as sepsis, the second hit or event is related to the actual transfusion of biologically active substances, which activates and primes neutrophils and ultimately leads to pulmonary destruction and capillary leakage, and then finally acute respiratory failure. So now for some risk factors associated with trolley. Female blood donors with previous pregnancies usually have HLA antibodies with a prevalence of 24% and the prevalence is increasing in relation to the number of previous pregnancies. Since HLA antibodies have been suspected in trolley, blood centers have established standards to produce plasma components mainly from male donors. Other risk factors include ICU patients that have received a transfusion of platelets and plasma, those who have received leukocyte antibodies, those with hematologic malignancies, and also those with cardiac diseases are at risk. 
The table seen here lists the risk for acute lung injury in general. The highest ALI risk are sepsis, aspiration of gastric contents, and multiple transfusion. Less than 50% of patients with risk factors develop ALI. In patients who have other risk factors for ALI, such as those listed in this table, possible trolley may be used to address these cases. When trolley occurs, lung function typically decreases within two hours after receiving a transfusion that is rich in plasma. The onset of trolley is similar to acute respiratory distress syndrome. There are clinical signs of pulmonary edema present, and the patient's x-ray shows a nodular infiltration or bat swing pattern of edema, which is also seen in acute respiratory distress syndrome from other causes. Hypoxemia will also be evident. If the patient is intubated, their aspiration will be visibly white or pink. Signs and symptoms associated with trolley include the following, hypotension, cough, frothy sputum, tachypnea, fever, tachycardia, and cyanosis. This table seen here represents the Canadian Consensus Conference proposed criteria for diagnosing trolley. In order to diagnose a patient with trolley, they must have hypoxemia indicated by the criteria seen here. The patient's chest x-ray will also be indicative of trolley with the characteristic bat swings present as mentioned earlier. The patient must also have no evidence of ALI before receiving the transfusion. They must also have no evidence of circulatory overload. Clinical evidence of circulatory overload is defined as a pulmonary capillary wedge pressure of 18 or greater when a pulmonary arterial catheter is present. The criteria for possible trolley is also listed here in this table. For a proper diagnosis of trolley, it is important to conduct a differential diagnosis. In order to differentiate transfusion-associated circulatory overload, or TACO, from trolley, BNP levels may help with this process. TACO is suggested by an absolute BNP level more than 100 and a post-transfusion to pre-transfusion ratio more than 1.5. Oftentimes, it is difficult to separate trolley from TACO. In many instances, patients have both TACO and trolley present at the same time. Clinicians must also rule out other causes of trolley, such as sepsis, acute cardiogenic edema, ARDS, bacterial infection, and other transfusion-related reactions. The first step in treating trolley is discontinuation of the offending transfusion, after which the patient should be evaluated for a transfusion reaction. Thereafter, trolley treatment is supportive in nature. Oxygen supplementation to correct hypoxemia is the cornerstone of this treatment and may include CPAP or BiPAP. However, invasive mechanical ventilation is necessary in 70 to 80% of these patients. Hemodynamic support is often necessary to combat hypovolemia and hypotension and to ensure end organ perfusion, which often includes administration of fluids and or vasoactive agents. Caution, however, should be exercised with diuretic use due to the risk of worsening hypotension. IV corticosteroid use is not currently recommended in trolley as there is little evidence to support the therapy, and the currently available evidence suggests that Hyman fully established AIDS, which is defined as established AIDS, more than two weeks after onset. Some developing strategies for treatment of trolley include use of HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, or statins, aspirin, and blood product alternatives. Research focusing on these possible alternatives are currently ongoing. Trolley prognosis can be low, especially if hypoxemia is not corrected within 24 to 48 hours of discovery. The majority of patients diagnosed with trolley will require ICU care and ventilator support, with a mean ventilator time of about 40 hours, however may last up for 3 to 10 days. Consideration should be given to the fact that milder cases of trolley may progress undiagnosed. The mortality rates of trolley are alarming. Mortality is estimated at 41 to 67 percent for trolley and possible trolley or AIDS as a composite endpoint in the critically ill, and is estimated at 5 to 17 percent in patients with a general diagnosis of trolley alone. There is limited data available that suggests that surviving patients recover to baseline lung function and can receive blood products in the future. Several prevention and risk reduction strategies against trolley have been proposed or evaluated. If possible, it is recommended that donors be screened for HLA and HNA antibodies 
and deferred from future donations if found to be carriers. Multi-parish female donors should also be deferred, as donors associated with Trolley are more likely to be female and multi-parish, and predominantly collecting blood from male donors is the standard means of performing this risk reduction strategy. Another strategy is to infuse solvent detergent treated plasma, as this plasma is pooled from many different donors and has shown to carry a significant reduction in trolley risk. There has been success in mitigating trolley risk from platelets by screening donors for anti-HLA antibodies and by resuspending platelets in a platelet additive solution to effectively reduce plasma volume. Because of this, relative to platelets, today most incidents of trolley now come from red blood cell infusions. And the only current strategy to reduce trolley risks associated with red blood cell infusions is to use red blood cell transfusions conservatively. One should note, however, that there are many red blood cell risk reduction strategies currently being explored. In summary, trolley is a serious respiratory complication of blood transfusions and is the leading cause of transfusion-related deaths in the United States. In trolley, Two main hypotheses for rise in pulmonary microvascular permeability are the leukocyte antibodies hypothesis and the two-hit model. Trally is the most likely seen with donation of high volumes of plasma. Management includes immediate discontinuation of transfusion followed by supportive care. There are some established prevention and risk reduction strategies against trally, and more are being considered. Please provide the best possible answer to the following patient case question. A patient receiving a blood transfusion is diagnosed with trolley. What should be the first step in treating this patient? A. Immediately administer oxygen through a nasal cannula. B. Immediately discontinue all IV corticosteroids. C. Immediately discontinue the blood transfusion. Or D. Assess the patient for ICU admission. The correct answer is C. Immediately discontinue the blood transfusion. This is always the first step in trolley or any other serious infusion-related reaction. This concludes our presentation on trolley. Thank you for listening.